in a circuit with an inductor and a power supply that's giving you some AC stuff going on. The power, as we've discussed a little bit, see, the power is sometimes positive and sometimes it's negative. I guess and I can identify, like, right here, from right here to right here, we're gonna have um, the current, you know, power is current times voltage. So the current and voltage are both positive during this instance right here. So we're gonna have power, and it, and in fact, reaches a maximum right in between right there. And then if I put a, another tick mark, you see here the voltage is negative, but the current's positive until we reach this point right here. So that means we're gonna have some negative power. That means that the uh, energy is leaving the inductor. So here we're putting energy into the inductor. That means that the power going into the inductor is positive. Then in a moment later, we're, we've got energy leaving the inductor. And so the inductor is giving energy back to the power supply. And then here we've got, oh look, we've got negative current and negative voltage during this time interval right here until that goes positive. So I throw you some dotted lines right here and I tell you that then we're putting energy back into the inductor again. <clears throat> of course the field's going the other direction. That's why they're both negative. But we're putting real energy into the inductor. So there is a magnetic field in the inductor during this time and during that time. It switches direction. But look at the frequency of this. The switching is, dang, the frequency of the switching is twice the frequency of our circuit. So that's kind of cool. Maybe it has something to do with the square of that thing. But, but the wonderful thing about it is the power averaged. If you average that power delivered to the inductor is there is no average power delivered to the inductor. You're charging it up, discharging it, and you're getting it right back out. So that is awesome. Another thing I wanted to say about inductors is we can investigate the maximum voltage on the inductor. And you know that's going to be, oh shoot, we've got these same things. The screw is going on here. The reason is you've got, if you've got a, uh, what do you want? You want a resistor? and an inductor like that, you see that? You've got the voltage max from the resistor points in the direction of the current and the voltage max from the inductor points as a right angle to it. So as I rotate these two phasers, check this out, they go woo, like that. Sometimes we're going to be having positive power delivered, other times we're gonna have negative power being delivered, but the resistor is always getting some power delivered to it. So we get this really cool effect where it's the voltage max across the resistor square plus the voltage max across the inductor square. And I can expand that a little bit. That's just going to be I max times aura square square and we're gonna take the screw to all of it. Now this max voltage across the resistor, uh, across the inductor, sorry, is the maximum current, that's V max, is the maximum current times well, remember we called it the capacitive, sorry, the inductive reactance, and I'm supposed to score both of these things. So if I keep going, doo -doo 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 -doo, this stuff, V max, is really just I max times the screw of all that business, which is gonna be R square plus X square L. The inductive reactance, and inductive reactance, how do I define inductive reactance? Wasn't that just omega times inductance? Yeah, yeah, let's see. If we have a bigger inductor, we got more reactance, and if we have a bigger frequency, we have more reactance. So this is just I max times the screw of R square plus omega square L square. And then I can identify this as looking a lot like Ohm's law. The maximum voltage is the maximum current times what is the effective mm, resistance, I kind of want to say, but I can't say resistance, so I have to say impedance. And I say then impedance for, well, I call it Z, impedance for a resistor and an inductor in a circuit is going to be the screw of R square plus omega square L square. Now, I'm kind of itching to put an inductor and a capacitor in a resistor at the same time. But before we do that, we've got to think about how we're going to get maximum current. So I'm going to make a graph of current as a function of omega. Current as a function of the frequency that I'm using to drive the circuit. All right. So this is 
rather complicated. First of all, the current through a resistor is completely independent. So this is a resistor's current. But if I have a capacitor and I increase the frequency, first of all, what if the frequency is zero for a capacitor? I'm going to do a capacitor in orange. If the frequency is zero, do I expect the maximum current through the capacitor to be big or small? I'm thinking there's probably going to be no current. If I just leave a capacitor hooked up to a DC power supply, ultimately the current stops rather quickly, actually. I mean, okay, it takes infinite time. <laughs> That's not quick. But there will be no current in the long term. But if I start switching this direction, if I cross out this guy and put in an AC, and it's going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. In fact, the faster I switch back and forth, the more current that I'm going to get here. So I get this kind of behavior. Oh, okay. So this guy is my capacitor. And if I get myself an inductor, now I'm going to say I have an inductor, and it's connected to a um, DC power supply. We'll examine the limits as we often do in physics. If I have an inductor hooked up to a DC power supply, and am I going to wait for a long time? Am I going to get a current through that inductor? Sure I am. And in fact, it's going to be a really big current. So I'm going to say that the inductor starts really big, but as soon as I start switching this, what if I cross that guy out and put in an AC power supply? If I start switching the direction, then the inductor gets more and more and more pissy, the inductor gives me a graph that looks like this. Oh, interesting. Now, as we start to com oh boy, as we start to combine these things, you can kind of see that there will be a sweet spot in which I can get the maximum current. And maximum current square is going to give me the power. So there's an ideal situation, an ideal relationship between capacitance and inductance that's going to give me a match. It's going to give me something really cool. But let's first define impedance, and then I'll leave this video. I think we'll come back and, and address that other issue. I want to throw, show you all three of my phasers. There's my first phaser, the resistor's phaser, where current's in line with voltage. And here's the capacitor's phaser, where I say current leads voltage as we spin counterclockwise. And then the inductor's phaser says that current lags voltage, or voltage leads current. And so the cool thing about this is the resistor is easy. The resistor, you just put the resistor on there, and it's like, boom, you haven't noticed anything at all. So we'll put it over here. But if you put the capacitor and the inductor in at the same time, you see that they are sort of at cross purposes to each other. They are doing exactly the opposite thing. So while the inductance has an effect, the capacitance has the opposite effect. And we can say, what are we going to say about I max? Isn't that V over R? But R is it has to be in quotes. So I max is going to be V over our inductant, no, our uh, impedance, this thing right here. Impedance. The, the effective resistance of all these complicated components is called the impedance. So I'm going to put this over Z. Maybe instead I should put, I should say I max for the capacitor is that over XC and I max for my inductor is V over XL. All right, but notice that these guys are opposite directions and so we're going to have to go over into this equation and define our, well, we could do it the long way, but I just want to show you that this, because they're in opposite directions, P thag says you got this, this is your voltage of the resistor, and then you've got your voltage of the capacitor this direction, and you've got your volt, uh, uh no, sorry, your voltage of the capacitor is, what the heck am I doing? Sorry, the voltage is something that's being controlled by the power supply. You've got your current of the resistor here, and you've got your current of the capacitor up here, and you've got your current of the inductor right here. So I have to subtract those two from one another in order to do this problem. So watch this. The impedance is therefore defined as, let's see if I can fit this all under the screw. It's going to be R squared. Plus, now it's not going to be all three terms because it's not a three-dimensional problem. It's still the two-dimensional problem, but I have to take the inductive reactance and subtract the capacitive reactance and then score it.
And if I expand this, I get that the impedance is R squared plus omega L minus 1 over omega C, that quantity squared. And something beautiful happens when this is minimized. If we minimize this sucker, then we can get the impedance to be exactly R. In fact, if these two things are equal, something beautiful happens. You'll have to wait to find out, or maybe you could go find out now.